<laughs> See that hunter what? <laughs> Indeed he would. You gotta love Daytona Beach and I'm recording, aren't I? Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and something maybe closer to the Hobo and female friend webpage. I'll tell you about that later. But I'm here, and therefore it's time to talk about wrestling. And every so often I'll have to go back, because actually I'm doing my other job right now. And for the first time in 40 days and 40 nights, I'm going to have pizza and red wine on Friday. That just makes this day so much more epic. Epic. I'm here, at least for right now, until I hear the oven go off, to talk about some NXT. Because NXT Daytona Beach came into town, and boy, was it that B-League show again. Um, Lots to get into. Yeah, and a lot of good videos for you guys to see. And there's also a mystery shout-out. I'm still tickled with myself. Oh, wow. The first reaction. Jeez, this place is empty. Um, you know, I got there a little bit later than I wanted, so I got there about 6.45, got my ticket. Oh, wait, where's my ticket? Shoot, let me sure go show you my... No, you know what tickets... Do I have a ticket here? No, um, I got my ticket at the door. It's so much cheaper than buying it at Ticketmaster. Ooh, Ticketmaster. Never going through them again. I'd rather pay, just pay for it. There and get the cheap seats. <laughs> like, like, like. Like a woman and I were honest. Uh, gee, it was pretty good. Um, they start off. They have again as always. Oh, and I have that there too. Um, start off as always with the autograph session. That was pretty cool because that was just something else you didn't notice. That is this guy, Hobo Tom, and Lacey Lane. Thank you very much, Lacey Lane. I want that for Christmas. Um, and then it was some other guy and Jeet. I forget who was last name. Oh, he wrestled. So the other guy. Wow, that was a surf and turf match. Well, that was a flaming yarn match. So that makes sense. Jeet Roma. Yes. And again, we saw our first call-up. And I, I think it's because I'm not very familiar with Ring of Honor. I didn't know who it was. But now that I've seen him twice, I know who it is. So thank you very much, Daytona Beach crowd. Proving me right again. Uh, so they start off, um, again, they have the, I have them in a video kind of exiting. I do need that girlfriend. Or at least a woman's eyes focused. You'll see. Then um, uh, during the introduction, I caught parts of it. I'm getting a little bit sneakier. I'm learning to put my camera between my legs and on my knee so it doesn't look as obvious. Actually, it's still pretty good, though. Sometimes it's a little crooked, but that's okay. I can deal with that. 
And trust me, you guys are getting wrestling for free, so I think you guys can deal with it too. But um, they actually acknowledged. <laughs> they said, "Oh, we just saw, we just, we just, we just saw the Viking Raiders that called up to the main roster," and everyone's like. No. When they said, well, we here in NXT know them as War Raiders. And it was War, 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 War. Because it's so much easier. Um, it was actually pretty cool, then. Um, actually, for this show, so again, that, that, they always do that to hype the crowd up. But for this show, they actually also had an honor guard come in, and they had someone actually singing the national anthem for a change. And I might look a little distracted because I'm actually getting work done because... That's terrible. Dude, these kids want to go to high school? That's wrong. But so they actually had an actual call guard and they actually had someone singing the national anthem. Granted, it wasn't live. It shows a little bit more production value. Obviously, a lot more production value than this guy has. That's a whole other thing. I'm lucky if I can. Ooh, I'll do that too. Yeah, you, well, well, you heard that too. So again, I do have some production value. Um, a couple of the things had uh, Jermaine Haley was here, and people were like, "You B show and a half." Then it got, of course, better because the uh, uh, undisputed era was showing up. Undisputed. I, don't, I think Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly must live here in Florida. They're here. A, they've had a lot of main events here in Daytona Beach. And and again, I'll, I'll get to that later in the video. Um, Bianca Bella was also coming in along with Kai Sono, Chris Hero. Um, so it was pretty cool. Again, it's just weird from. Oh. It's, it's just a weird feeling. Again, the Daytona Beach, it's, it's a really odd crowd. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I did a great I did a great job in that crowd, though, for the Daytona Beach bump fight league. That's pretty good. Again, they have more production. And I saw that woman again. <laughs> Ugh. 
So let, let, let me continue. I need to find that. Oh, I can do that too. Can I? I'll, I'll figure that out. I have plenty of time to figure out stuff. Well, let's get into some wrestling action. Let's see, I want to do this first. That gets me money. Heaven knows YouTube doesn't. I can say that because it's ass. Certain time frame. And I'm going to take a very quick break and I'll be. Yes! It's wonderful! Look at this, folks. Pizza on a Friday. I haven't eaten anything on Friday. And oh, oh, yeah. Fruit of the vine. That's good. With all that being said, and then let's talk about some pro wrestling. Let's talk about NXT. NXT. Our first match of the evening goes for one fall. One fall. It's a tag team match. And actually, I think I got my hopes up a little bit because it was um, Mansoor and old school Bren Williams. I like that. Feed me power. They've kind of switched his gimmick again. That's the only thing. I don't want to talk to her more about that, but how they keep on switching gimmicks with some people. Versus Parker and Lee, who are have amazing charisma coming out of the zoo.
first thing is that they that both teams had a hug it out moment. This was almost like a face versus face. I think Parker and Lee knew they were going to eat the pin, and they were they they tried to heal it up. They have too much charisma to be heels. Again, um, it was actually pretty pretty good. I mean, the one guy is loud as anything. Again, that oozes charisma. It's great. Uh, Mansoor, he did a great technical move. He did a farm like an old of uh, the collegiate wrestling fireman's carry takedown. I mean, this stuff was great though. I mean, he's really technical. It was a fun, fast page, good tag team match throughout the whole match. It, it really featured the tag team work. It's good stuff. Just see. It was fast paced. They were giving some stiff, stiff shots today because it didn't go. It went. Oh, went thud. I like thud. I like me some thud, baby. Woo! Um, again, the chops there for hard. I mean, the two guys again, Parker and Lee. They tried to be the heel tag team. They have way too much charisma. I mean, this was just a really fun match. And they worked well with the crowd. It was fun. The crowd was energized. They got the crowd excited. These are four people no one's heard of. And they've managed to become amazing professional wrestlers because the crowd's excited. The crowd's like, yes, 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 yes. And so with that, I mean, you if, if, if you're a no-name and you get the crowd excited, you darn put on a surf and turf match. And then it was really weird. That it got so weird. I'm gonna have to have a bite of my first bite of pizza in forty days. Mm. Oh my god! Why do I do that to myself every so often? I try to be good, but. Every time I get back, they pull me right back in. And this is looking absolutely terrible because it's all jumbled up. Yes, I am doing work. Well, because this is my hobby. Until YouTube pays me. Next match was Jasmine Duke versus Karen Q.
the big thing to take out of this, Jasmine Duke can land on her neck and walk away from it, which is really good. The other thing is, well, that's kind of one thing. Two, this started a whole bunch of botch. It was like infectious botchiness. Because Jasmine Duke, wow, she's short. Or Jasmine Duke, I'm sorry, she's not short. She's skinny. And Karen Q, she's short. That doesn't kind of take away from the match. Um, for the most part, again, I think a lot of people do live right around Orlando. I think Jasmine Duke also like cut her lip because she was like wiping the inside of her lip. What's wrong there? I know that happens every so often. Um, it was just a really plotting match. Jasmine Duke, outside of striking, really can't do much. Um, there was the one botch. Two, was it this one or the other? Oh, no, this one had that terrible botch. And Karen Q was trying to do a Northern Lights Bridge and Suplex. And literally, like, dropped Jasmine Duke on her head. Jasmine Duke thought this was a shoot or something. Like, I'm not doing, I'm not flipping over for that. Well, guess what happened? Karen Q was probably strong enough to do that, and lanky enough, and to make it look terrible. And then Karen Q put the Boston Crab on. This made me happy. Yes, yes, yes. People still use the Boston Crab. That's awesome. I'll tell you what, some fan got a money shot from Jazz Duke. I got somewhat of one. Check this out. Can Jasmine Duke just really slower though. She wasn't pulling her kicks though. That that was a good thing. She wasn't pulling her kicks. They were landing with thuds. This was just really a slow plotting match, and the kind of crowd kind of got lost in it. I mean, there was some fun stuff. I mean, Karen Q is amazing, but not after that botch though. I'm like, ooh, that was vicious. That was terrible. Even the whole crowd went. You all went. Oh, wow. We just saw someone break their neck live. How Jasmine Duke and was probably the professional. Karen Hughes probably went out being super apologetic afterwards. Again, I've met Jez I've met um, Karen Q. Very nice woman, though. Quiet, soft-spoken. Gen very genuine person. But, I mean, everything considered, even though I did see the Boston Crab, which is awesome. It's just like can of soup match. You know, if you're going to have that plotting style and botchiness, it's not good. And let's see here. Then our next match was Luke Menenzies without his manager. So maybe they ditched him. And I, I didn't catch this guy's name. He's the freak beast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Introducing first from your
only because he reminds me literally of someone uh, from the rock and wrestling time period of the 80s. I'm a huge nostalgia freak. I'll always mark out for nostalgia stuff. Again, this was again, kind of slow-paced match. Um, again, the outfits were... Um, the outfit uh, Freak Beast had on was amazing. So it was really good with that. But then for the most part, everything else about the match was kind of dullish, though. There wasn't anything... There's a whole bunch of rest holds. Very slow. I mean, they were snug with each other, too. Those forearms and European uppercuts look pretty good. I mean, Luke Menzies is definitely the, the heel. He does all the heel tactics, the hair pulling and everything. Again, slow and plotting. Um, Luke Menzies did go over. I like the fact the other guy was doing double axe handle smashes to everything. That's fun. Again, that's nostalgic. I'm going to like that. And so instead of being a can of soup, like I was initially going to give it, because it brought back those fuzzy warm feelings from the 80s wrestling, this was a ham sandwich. And let's see here. Another bite. So good. Fourth match was Rena Gonzalez. Also has to live somewhere in Orlando. She's always here in Daytona Beach. And Lacey Lane, they said that she's from Florida somewhere. It's probably like an hour, two-hour road trip at most for them. Where they where they go, and we is definitely bigger, stronger one. Um, Lacey Lane 
again, much quicker. Again, a really botchy match. There was one one thing. Rita Gonzalez learned a lesson. She's not wearing jean chaps. Um, the crowd was 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 pretty good. Thing is, all the for all the front row areas was full. You can still see spots in the bleachers though. Um, again, it was it wasn't a it was actually a pretty good match. Um, Lacey Lane did pull out the Black Widow stuff move I haven't seen before. Rita Gonzalez did the fall away sign was. I mean, minus the botch. It was it was a good, it was a good match. The botch just killed it though. Because if any guy did that, it wouldn't be able to be like, you can't no sell that. Because because she because she crotched herself on the top rope. Any guy would if he wasn't crying to his mama in pain. People might think wrestling's fake. So with that being said, still a good match. It's a ham sandwich match. Then for our sixth match, or fifth match actually, right before the break, we had Jeet Roma, who seems to be an up-and-coming crowd favorite, takes on Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, Chris Hero, Death by Elbow.
You know, Ono was a classic wrestler. And with this match, there were a lot of arm bars. It seemed like Cassius Ono was getting over jet lag or something. It was slow plotting with the exception of a couple moves. A lot of rest holds, a lot of, I know, attempted submission holds. Cashton again. He can't, again, he's a good wrestler. He's a great mat technician. I mean, the crowd was really trying. Oh no, just like jet lag. I mean, very, very deliberate, very slow, kind of heelish. Even though they did shake hands in the very beginning, this has really made the crowd want to take the intermission. And I don't think anyone left though. Which is always a terrible thing when there's an intermission and people start to leave. You know something's wrong. And those chops, woo! They were lively. Again, it just seemed really slow, although he did on the one guy did hit an amazing belly to back suplex, though. That looked good. But Kayasona hit the death by elbow. That was all she wrote. It's a canis match. Then we have our intermission break. We have another bite of pizza. Mm. So good, pizza. And then coming back from break. We had Albert Hardy Jr. Also known from Ring of Honor as ACH versus Jermaine Hale, who had some manager with him.
And the crowd was going crazy for ACH. They obviously know they obviously know who he was. Um ACH cannot do big guy stuff though. Especially against a big guy. That was not working in his favor. You're doing great at talking. I like loud wrestlers. It shows emotion. It shows they're vested in the, what they're doing. ACH, I didn't realize he can do so much flippy stuff. That was pretty good. You got to like the heel wrestler who brings the heel manager and knows how to use his weight around the ring. So that was really good. I mean, again, I can see them giving him... ACH has a really good move set. The other guy had a good move set. It was actually a fun match. The crowd got involved. ACH. ACH. You start getting the crowd chanting your Indian name, and you put on actually a good match, you'll get a cheeseburger rating from this guy. And then, oh, I have so much, I have so much to, to poo poo about this. Seventh match, well, not to poo poo, but I have my, I have my own personal issues. Diana Parasi versus Bianca Belair. Diana, you are not Princess Kimberly. You do the princess bow. Boo! 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 I mean, it started, the match started off great. There was some amazing action. I mean, both these ladies can wrestle. Do not get me wrong on that.
But the fact that Deanna Parazzi is is the mystical whatever introduction. There's only one princess in professional wrestling, and that is Princess Kimberly. I'm old. That's the one thing I remember. Don't rip off wrestlers. That's gimmick infringement. And I'll get you booed. Boo! All the time. And even though you put on a good match, I'll still boo you. Unless you do something truly amazing. Blows my mind. I mean, this was a really fun match, though. I mean, Bianca can run the ropes. The Anna Parazzi is, dude, she's amazing at running the ropes. I mean, that was awesome. They have great charisma between the two of them. Um, Bianca Belair, is, is, she's still a heel. She still, still does her heel stuff. And it was fun. It was fast-paced. The crowd got involved. You get the crowd involved. Even though I'm giving you the X X spot heat for for pretending to be someone you're not, not you're not a princess, Kimberly, Diana Praza, Jobber to you can half the women ever, but still, I can look past that. And I mean, I was I, I had a good. This was a great match. It's a surf and turf match. And that leads us to the main event of the evening. A new Undisputed Era was coming in, and they're probably the main event. Because, again, they announced Undisputed would, Era would be there, so therefore they should be the main event. So, But before, I'm like, well, who are they going to face? And this is when things get a little fuzzy with me. Because, for the most part, there was the same woman that I saw their last Daytona Beach show, wearing the same outfit. And I went hobo Tom and just started to talk to her. So, weren't you here last time? Yes, I was. It's like, oh, wow, that's cool. It's like, didn't the Undisputed have their, didn't the Undisputed Era main event last time? You're, you know what? You're right. They did. Oh, yeah, they've, they've, and, she, and then she says, oh, they seem to main event a lot here. So, oh, yeah, well, a couple of years ago, I mean, that's bad for Bobby Fish. Because a ton of beaches, unlike Bobby Fish. So he's like, well, why would you say that? I mean, I know he gets injured. Last time he was here and wrestled, he got busted open. Oh, I remember that. So you know what? It was the Undisputed Era versus Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch 1-2.
but you, mystery woman in black, because you made that show that much more interesting and more exciting for one said hobo. This year, my tag team goes out to you. And I miss a whole bunch of action. But nonetheless, um, Bobby Fish, he's still such a great talker. Kyle Riley, like very classic wrestler. Only Lorcan. The only problem is that um, Only Lorcan shaved. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell the difference between Only Lorcan and Danny Burke. It's such a minor thing, though. It did not, oh, it did not t in any fashion take away from this match, though. fun match. I mean, this is one of those great classic tag team matches that I really do miss. And it's, again, just one of those things. It's like, you know, I remember when tag teams used to do this all the time. And now they are doing this, finally again. And it's, again, classic 80s styles tag team match infused with some of the flippy flippy stuff, which is always good. The hard hitting stuff. The rope running. So it's not a plotting collar and elbow match like it used to be, but it's a fun match. It was an exciting match, very well-paced match, and here's some action from that match. And again, this was a really fun match. For one thought, I thought the Undisputed Era were going to lose, too. Again, they had the a double dual submissions. Eventually, um, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish hit, hit their version of Total Elimination onto Oni Lorcan, I think. It was kind of a good buy for Oni Lorcan, I guess, because he's on 205 now.
This was amazing. This was the one match that had no botches in it. I mean, these are true professionals. And if I'm fully entertained and engaged and care about the woman next to me is too. The whole crowd is. It's a good match. We're excited. Woo! That's getting a filet mignon rating. And that was NXT Daytona Beach. So again, it was, it was a weird show. The, the, the ups were up there. The downs were down there. It was good, though, overall. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Uh, please stay tuned because Sunday I'm going to be live.